Blog Talk Radio. Hey, good evening. What's cracking? This is your tuning in to Fat Man Radio, and I am your host, Darren McDuffie. <clears throat> We're getting started today. I'm actually going to have my guest, Morley Robbins, on. Um, Morley is affectionately known as the Magnesium Man, and you'll see why when we get uh, get into the conversation. But before we get into the conversation, and I'm waiting again on Morley to call in so we can get him on the air, but um, if you have not gone and uh, picked up my auto re- audio report, I suggest you do that. The audio report is called Between Two Thieves, How Big Food and Big Pharma Are Robbing You of Your Health. And it's an uh, eyewitness account from me. Um, I'm, if, if you don't know, I was an ex-pharmaceutical rep, so I know all the inside all the inside scoop about the pharmaceutical companies. And also I know a, a, a bit about uh, big food as well. So go to naturalhealthforwellbeing.com and pick up that free report or you can go to my blog which is called i'm the fat and it's it's exactly like you would say it i am the fat com. so you can go there and pick up the um and pick up the uh the free report the report is actually an audio report so for those of you out there who don't like to read i'm a i'm a big reader i love reading but if you don't like to read you'd go and you pick up that report and it's audio. So you can just download it to your iPod and you can listen to it while you're doing other things, which is one of the things that I really like to do uh, instead of always having to read is just uh, listening to things uh, in my car. So I'll download a lot of things to my iPod and I will listen to those things in my car. So waiting for uh, Morley here to call in uh, to the show so we can go ahead and get started. So I'll just keep talking until Marley calls in. But uh, interesting thing today, um, I was just wondering as I was coming home today how we have um, lost everything to cell phones, how cell phones have taken over our lives. So I'm driving down the turnpike, and I I noticed this at least one time a day that someone is driving down the turnpike and they're actually using their cell phone. They're actually texting on their cell phone. Whatever happened to people talking? I mean, no one wants to pick up their phones to talk now, but you have people that are driving down major highway, driving down the turnpike, and they are actually texting on their phones, which is to me is dangerous. And you have people who think that they can text and drive, but that's not always the case. So, um, you know, you... I don't know how cell phones begin to take over our lives, but I know a lot of people do everything by their cell phone and they're constantly checking their cell phone. And I tend to do the same thing, but I'm trying to get myself away from doing that and just be more in the moment, be uh, talking to people uh, and just enjoying nature and enjoying what life brings me instead of always having to check my cell phone every five minutes in fear that I'm missing something. And I don't know, for those of you out there whom I have an older phone now, it's kind of a dinosaur. It's a BlackBerry. And um, one of the things that I always enjoyed about the BlackBerry when I first got it was that I would always be able to check my email. So um, that's a hindrance to me now. So I'm not always wanting to check my email and, uh, I'm really wanting to get away from that from that older phone, but I'm not willing to pay that four or five hundred dollars for these for these newfangled phones. So, all right. So I believe Marley is waiting in the switchboard. So I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, Marley on, and we'll go ahead and get the the show started. Hey, Marley, is that you? I am here, but is this a bad connection? No, I can hear you fine. Okay. I can hear you fine. Right. Okay. Little warbly on this end. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Well, I can hear you just fine on my end. So, um, we'll go ahead and get the get the show started. Um, uh, Morley, if you want to go ahead and just give the audience, I like to just give the audience the journey. How did you come you know, into being the uh, magnesium man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. <laughs> How much time do you got? No. I give the uh, the thumbnail version. I'm a um, a pre med retread. Uh, <laughs> I had designs on medical school, and my organic chemistry professor made sure that was never going to happen. And I've thanked him many times. Uh, went into hospital management, 
uh, 32 years ago. Did that for 12 years and then became a consultant, hospital consultant, for 20 years. So I spent 32 years working in the um, allopathic industry. And about five years ago, had a um, frozen shoulder is what really got me into wellness. And then what got me into magnesium was a frozen shoulder. Uh Um, And some friends who owned a health food store told me I needed to go see Dr. Liz. And I said, well, I don't do witchcraft because I knew that meant she was a chiropractor. And they, they sold me some supplements. And I was in writhing pain for a couple months. And I went back and I said, look, you must have something stronger. And the owner of the store looked at me and she said, Maureen, we love you. So, and she's, um, she practices what's called network spinal analysis. It's a very light touch form of chiropractic that she's touching specific points on your body to retrain your body how to un- or let go of uh, stress patterns. Uh-huh. And she does it with a room full of clients, so like the nine people being healed at the same time. It's like, it's a mind-blowing experience. I'm like, I'm like reeling from this as I walk into the room and realize that I'm not going to be alone. And, and she comes over and she, she says, and I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't believe how much better I felt. And within two weeks, I went from not being able to lift my hand above my waist to having full rotation and mobility in my joint. It forced me to say, okay, so what don't I understand about natural healing? I stepped off the allopathic grid. I became a, nat- a, um, a wellness coach. And she, Liz and I have now become not just uh, professional partners, but life partners. And then huh. a couple of years ago, um, so I mean, I've completely reinvented myself there. I'm, like, I'm a completely new person. And a couple of years ago, I wrote a, an article because a number of our clients were uh, banging on me to share what we were learning and write some some stories. And one of the clients who was a psychologist said, I think you would it would be wise for you to use paradoxical intent. And what that is is use reverse psychology. And so I went, Great, I can I can have some fun with that. So I wrote an article entitled Let's Fake a Heart Attack. Huh. I thought, it's way too passive to have a heart attack. Let's make it. And so I made a 10-step a ten, a ten plan. And step number eight was deplete your body of magnesium. And I, you know, I read an article and I'd heard that magnesium was important, so I was just being very flippant. And I shared it with another client who was a practitioner. And she said, you know, love the article, very funny. Um, and then she looked me in the eye. <clears throat> it was one of these moments of truth. And she said, but Morley... I can't help but think that magnesium isn't more important than you realize. And I went, yeah, maybe it is. So I went to to Google, I Googled, and and up popped Carolyn's book. And so I read her book, The um, The Magnesium Miracle. And anyone who really wants to do That's Carolyn Dean, right? Carolyn Dean, absolutely. Uh uh And she's out in in Hawaii. Uh And I Uh I read the book, and Darren, it was like a, a murder mystery that I couldn't put down. And suddenly I realized, like, why? I mean, one of my gifts on the hospital side was helping clients fill their beds. And then I started reading Carolyn's book, and I realized, oh, my gosh, the reason why everyone's in these beds is they don't have any magnesium. And it was like this real powerful um, epiphany for me. It was like it became a moment of truth, and that's what spurred me on to become Magnesium Man. And Mm -hmm. and one of my great... um, privileges is that Carol and Dean and I are very good friends now and we refer cases to each other and we talk about magnesium and it's like it's like I, I still pinch myself and say is this for real? I mean did I go from obscurity to being her, her uh, equal in terms of understanding this metabolic mineral. So it's, it's been an amazing journey over the last several years. I've had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, and how did you go about doing that, Morley? I know um, I've heard you on some podcasts myself, but can you just share with us how you went about actually becoming this this expert in magnesium? Um, that's a that's a great question. You know what? Actually, you know what? There, no one has ever asked me that question. I love that. <laughs> how did I actually do it? 
um, there was a, a commercial many years ago by E.F. Hutton, and they, they said that we, we earn our money the old-fashioned way. We earn it the hard way. And, and that's what I did. I, I just started reading articles about it, and I um, was doggedly determined to figure out how important this mineral was. And one article led to another, and you know, suddenly I was reading hundreds of articles, and now I've, I've read over a thousand, and I've really lost count. I've read 20 books. I've interviewed a dozen magnesium researchers around the country. I've talked to countless practitioners. I've attended courses. Um, I've listened to, to podcasts like you have. And it's almost like it's a, um, like a past life trend. Like I was, I don't know, it's like I tapped into some knowledge base that I must have had before because if, if anyone on this show were to look at my undergraduate curriculum, they would just laugh and say, gosh, this guy could barely spell magnesium much less understand what it does. But for some reason at this point in my life, it's, it was like a, um, I'm like a heat seeking missile and I have an insight about what this mineral is doing inside the body that, you know, they're not, they're probably only a, a few hundred scientists in the world who are studying it. And I, for whatever reason, I, I seem to be tapping into that um, data bank and that brain trust. And I'm, but one of my gifts is um, pattern recognition. So I can take data and I can see what, where, the, where the trend's going or what's the, what's the significance of this. And so I've, I've used these articles about different enzyme pathways and suddenly stepped back from it to see the forest or the trees and began to see what's really happening in energy pathways and metabolic pathways and, and detox pathways that isn't really openly discussed in a lot of um, articles, whether it's you know, scientific articles or, or articles you find on the web. Uh -huh. And it's just I keep looking for new insights and new ways to connect the dots. And that's how these, um, I, I guess that's how these, the um, knowledge bases feel. But it started out as a, a little key at the top of the hill, and it's become a pretty big uh, boulder as it's been rolling down the hill and, and it's gathering momentum. But it's just this um, collection of different sources of information that's allowed me to create this kind of a, this gestalt of, of what's going on with magnesium. Yeah, it's it's very funny because when I used to be in the pharmaceutical industry, I didn't understand anything. I was, I tell people I was greener than a blade of grass. And then when I got out of the industry and I started to um, just dive more into nutrition and studying and, and about disease and all these other things, that's when everything kind of started to come together for me. So I know exactly what you're saying. Um, when it comes to magnesium, what makes magnesium so important for us? Let me use an analogy, because that's always one of, the, one of the first points of reference that people like to get to. So why is it so important? Here's an analogy. Most people at some point in their life have been to a symphony. And so every great orchestra hall is built on a solid foundation. You can't build a building without a good foundation. And that's magnesium in the body. But every great orchestra hall also has a gifted conductor. And that, too, is magnesium. But every great orchestra also has a wide spectrum of musicians. And those are the other minerals. And so if, if you've been to a symphony, just before the conductor comes out, all the musicians are practicing, right? Mm -hmm. And what's it sound like? It sounds it's like garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's like a bunch yeah. of noise, right? Yeah, yeah. Then the conductor walks out gets on the podium, and taps their baton a couple times, three times, on the, on the podium. And then there's silence. And then the conductor lifts the baton, and then what happens? The most they beautiful get, music. Yeah. yeah they, get, they, all, they, all, they all cue to that baton. And 
That's what magnesium does inside the body. It yeah, that's a great thing for regulating. And it's yeah, that's a, for people. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that's a great analogy, and I can um, definitely identify with it because I used to be in band, so I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and the thing is that most people, I mean, up until a couple of years ago, I I had heard of magnesium. I was like, yeah, well, sure, it's a mineral. And it, that's what we think. It's a mineral. But what I think the mistake that's being made is it's being treated as though it's a, a moon circling Jupiter, when in mm-hmm. fact it's the sun, and it is the source of regulation. It is the source of timing. I mean, think, think about it this way: um, there, there are clock genes that regulate the circadian rhythm in our body. Now, there's a 24-hour cycle, right? Mm-hmm. Well, those clock genes are bathed by magnesium, and they're kept in tune by magnesium. The, the whole process of keeping DNA, which I think we would all agree is pretty important, right? Yeah. Well, DNA, there, there are three enzymes that repair DNA problems. There's, it's called DNA ligase 1, DNA ligase 2, and DNA ligase 3. And one is for mix in the, in the, um, the helix. Two is for a single strand break, and three is for a double strand break. And magnesium is activating those enzymes to make sure that the DNA stays healthy. And then it goes on to activate riboflavin, which is vitamin B2. And riboflavin is actually what keeps DNA regulated and doing its thing. You cannot replicate DNA without magnesium. It's impossible. You can't create energy in the body. Energy is spelled MG hyphen ATP. Every cell in our body must have that currency in order to do its work. Mm-hmm. And then what you'll hear, what you'll read on every article or every um, internet um, diatribe on magnesium is, well, magnesium activates 300 uh, enzymes. Well, actually, there's a research scientist in, also in Hawaii um, who says the number's closer to seven to 800. And I just read an article the night before that where a researcher said actually it's closer to 2,000. So wow, yeah. The, the next closest enzyme or next closest mineral in terms of, of uh, enzyme activity is zinc, and that's at 200. So it gives you a sense of the importance of magnesium. It's tenfold more important than zinc, and most people say, wow, zinc is an amazing mineral. And so it's, it's been the Rodney Danger field of the, of the field of nutrition for probably 100 years for one reason. It does too much, and that's its curse. And it's, like, it's just like I'm convinced that your former employer, the pharmaceutical industry, mm-hmm. and the supplement industry are, have both been born of magnesium deficiency. Because when magnesium is allowed to be at its peak level in the human body, you don't need a lot of other support. And I know that's that's heretical for a lot of your listeners, but it's really that powerful when it's allowed to be in a body that's not overwhelmed with stress and is allowed to be at its peak level. It, it's an amazing um, intermediary in the human body. Yeah, I wanted to kind of uh, throw something at you uh, real quick uh, while we're talking about pharmaceuticals and my background. There are a number of drugs out there, and I know I used to sell against one drug. I believe it's Cipro, which is a real well-known antibiotic um, that displace magnesium in the body. And there's uh, uh, there's a lot of them out there. Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah. Um, the, the best article that speaks to this is um, Susie Cohen. You can Google mm-hmm. it. It's 14 mm-hmm. classes of drugs that deplete the body of magnesium. Um, and it comes from her book called Drug Muggers. It's a wonderful book. Um, there, there actually are 15 classes. There's a whole class that, that she missed, and they're called statins. Um, and they are, they are depleting the body of, of uh, magnesium, too. But what a lot of these drugs are doing, um, about 55% 
of all drugs now are activated with fluoride. I'm not sure the listeners yeah. recognize the significance of that, but that's that's really very bad. And my younger son, uh, who's a he, he's going to put his old man to shame because he's he's going to do it the right way. He's getting a PhD in biochemistry from Stanford, and you know he's just like uber bright, like his yeah. like his siblings. But he chose to chose to pursue a field of uh, biochemistry. But he told me um, several months ago that it, that well, he said that's really curious that they would do that. I said why why is that, Tom? He says well the only time we fluoride in the chemistry lab is when we want to kill enzymes. That's pretty hmm. interesting. So they're mm-hmm. using this, this element that has a uh, a magnetic relationship with magnesium, and so it binds up magnesium perfectly in the body. And so, you know, so many of these different classes of drugs, um, the uh, most SSRI, so antidepressants, uh, the chat, um, the proton pump inhibitors, um, I mean, there's but there's so many medications, and I think when you when you add up all the different class, all the different drugs within the 15 classes, it's several hundred drugs. Most of them brand name drugs that you would say, well, yeah, well, I've got that. And I was with a client today, in fact, just a few others, of medications. were driven by a message. And when she came to realize that, she was like, why would they do that? Oh, uh, I think Morley um, Morley dropped off. I'm going to wait for him a second for to call back in live radio, live radio. So we'll, we'll see if he, he calls back in. So just bear with me. Had a poor connection, I believe, from the beginning. So. Yeah, so that, that must have been that must have been the FDA cutting me off. Yeah, um, probably so. No, but but the, I don't know where I le- where I left you, but I was just basically saying that, that there's just this overwhelming number of of medications that are causing this loss of magnesium, and it's something that no one talks about. It's something that seniors aren't aware of, and it's I think it's a very serious problem that unwittingly. The, the field of medicine is using substances that I don't think they honestly know what they're doing inside the body. And I, I think, think there's a, well, maybe they do. I, I, yeah. I'm going to give yeah. them the benefit of the doubt. And the reason why I say that is that um, my, my oldest son, Matt, um, last summer married a newly minted MD who graduated up in Chicago. And she just, she has very limited understanding about what magnesium is doing inside the body. And it's, and it's not her fault. It's, it was never stressed in her curriculum. She said it was never taught in the classroom and it wasn't really a topic in the uh, clinical rounds. And I'm like, really? And it's just, it's, it's disorienting to hear that, but that's a fact of life. And so I, I think it's what I've decided, you know, for better or for worse, the balance of my time on the planet, I'm going to be having conversations like this so I can, you know, enable other people to become aware of how important this mineral is and how central it is to their well-being. So it's it's a delight to be able to have this conversation with you today. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, I'm going to throw something at you again, and I want to get you to kind of expand on this and um, your, you know, your first thoughts. And I'm just going to say that. Uh, can you expand on this statement? We live in a calcium-dominated society. <laughs> uh, yes, we do. Um, so, so how did that happen? Um, the, the spotlight put on a, a disease or a condition. 
condition, I shouldn't call it a disease, it's just a condition called osteoporosis. And some, again, I'll give people the benefit of the doubt, some well-meaning researchers misunderstood how the bone matrix works, and they put the spotlight on calcium and said people needed more calcium. So you say, well, that's not a problem, is it? When, in fact, it's it's a huge problem because it's it's actually uh, your your question is very um, multifactorial, and I recognize why you asked it the way you did. Mm-hmm. Because the very nature of our society feeds on the, the prevalence of calcium, and I'll explain why. So there's a there's a dynamic relationship in the body between calcium and magnesium, and they are in a constant dance with each other. And what's what's important is for, is for for folks to step back and recognize that there actually are four key minerals that pretty much run our body. They're called the four electrolytes. And it's calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. And I'm sure most people have heard of them, but they have no idea what they do. But what, what they do is provide electricity to run all 100 trillion cells of our body. And without them, there, there would be no life. But the, the interesting thing is that calcium, there, let me back up, there's, there's a uh, several nervous systems in our body, and you and I are engaged in what's called a constant conversation. Uh-huh. We're, clipping along, we're clipping along at about 2,000 bits per second. Well, there's another nervous system called the autonomic nervous system that runs our body. So that when you decide to have a sandwich for lunch, there are 10,000 chemical reactions that take place to metabolize that sandwich, and that's the autonomic nervous system at its finest. Where it moves at a million times faster than the conscious mind. So we can't think that fast. And it turns out that this autonomic nervous system is composed of two branches. There's a sympathetic branch, which uh-huh. we recognize as fight or flight, and then there's a parasympathetic branch that's called rest and recovery. And so going back thousands of years, our ancestors lived in a parasympathetic dominant environment where there were moments of terror, a lion was chasing you or or someone wanted to steal your food or whatever, But, but most of the time was spent in a more peaceful setting. That's not the case today. Today we live in this hyper-sympathetic environment and, and the natural question was, why? What, what happened? Well, it turns out that calcium, the mineral calcium, uh-huh. activates the sympathetic nervous system. Uh-huh. And it, the sympathetic nervous system is turned off by magnesium. So if you don't have enough magnesium in your body, you're always going to be in a state of sympathetic overdrive. Now, on the right. flip side, it turns out that the parasympathetic nervous system is turned on by potassium. And it is neutralized by sodium. Huh. So when you're, when you're sick, it's really important to have a good parasympathetic nervous system so that you can rest and repair. Well, think about the American diet. It's dominated by two minerals, calcium and sodium. So Mm. what have they done? They have created a diet that keeps us on sympathetic overdrive and shuts off our parasympathetic. So we have no way to recover. Is this why, um, because I know uh, there was a... Maybe about two, three years ago, I was having a lot of problems with my adrenals. I would just get tired at a certain time of day. Is magnesium important for, um, well, I guess I'm probably ask, um, answering my own question, but but maybe you can expand on it, the, the, the function of magnesium when it comes to adrenals. I know that magnesium is important for stress, but what about uh, adrenal function? Yeah, well, that's, a, that's a great question, Darren. Um mm-hmm. The, the adrenals are, I think, I, I personally think they're possibly one of the most important parts of the, of the human anatomy because of, of what it controls. You know, these are walnut-sized glands that sit on top of the uh, kidneys, 
So they are ad renal. They are on top of the renal glands, right, or the, or the renal organ. And so these glands are our defense mechanism. That when we are confronted with stress or we are confronted with some toxin or we are confronted with some food that we don't recognize, the adrenal glands mobilize a response. Well, it turns out that the adrenal glands are ruled just like the, the entire endocrine system. It's minerals that regulate the glands. They're not regulated by hormones. They make hormones, but they're regulated by minerals. And the mineral, the two minerals that regulate the adrenal glands are sodium and magnesium. And it's a ratio of sodium to magnesium that determines how um, strong or how resilient your adrenal glands are. And as you get into uh, fits of high stress, the body releases magnesium and zinc and B vitamins. And you say, well, why would it do that? I mean, that, that's just that's insane. But again, go back thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, depending upon your, your frame of reference. And uh-huh. when, you're in a, when you're confronted with a mountain lion, the last thing you want in your body is relaxing minerals. doesn't make sense. You've got a crisis. You've got to mobilize. You've got to have energy, and you have to have this, this incredible response to either fight that conflict or run from that conflict. And so the, so the adrenal glands make sure that you are able to do that, and it mobilizes not just cortisol, but it's mobilizing another key uh, stress hormone called aldosterone. Mm-hmm. And aldosterone's job is to, to hold on to sodium because we need that inside the cell in order to, to deal with this crisis. But the, the price you pay for that is you've got to let go of zinc, magnesium, and B vitamins. And that's right. the quid pro quo under stress. Yeah. Most I'll, people... I'll... Go ahead. Uh, aldosterone, isn't that, isn't that important for blood pressure as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's part yeah. of the, the, uh, the renin aldosterone um, um, activating system. And uh-huh. so aldosterone, is, no one ever talks about it, but it's just an incredibly powerful hormone that, that really um, depletes our body of magnesium. And what happens is, if people don't know that there's there's a metabolic price for stress, it's magnesium loss, which you which you referred to just a minute ago. So whenever you're under stress, you're dumping magnesium through your sweat, through your urine, and through your feces. It's automatic. It's the way the body works. But what what no one ever told us is that you need to restore it every day. And so the the way I deal with with clients is there are three things you've got to do every day. Air, water, and magnesium, <laughs> and it's and it's that important. Because can you Could, picture spending a day without breathing or without no. drinking water? But no, you wouldn't do it. And that's how important magnesium is to your daily survival. And it's what it's what allows your adrenal gland to become more resilient in the face of stress. Could this be a reason why I'm just going to? Say this could this be a reason why people are just freaking out because they don't have enough magnesium in their body? Because there's a lot of things happening. You know, if you look over, I'm not a big news person, but when I do glance over the news, you just notice that people are just freaking out because of stress. And I'm just wondering if that there's some kind of connection, some psychological connection to that because people don't have enough magnesium. They don't have something to kind of buffer that, buffer the stress. It's, it's a very well said. It's exactly what's happening. And I think Mark Circus had a wonderful article about that. And in it, he gave some great uh, examples of talking to police officers. And they're like, and it, it was basically the things are out of control. And people are, are shooting each other over ridiculous things. And what happens is as the, the level of magnesium drops in the body, <clears throat> you become hypersensitive. You overreact. And it's like you're wearing night vision binoculars. Everything becomes bigger and brighter than it really is. And this 
is it's a it's an epidemic. I'm guessing it's worldwide, but it certainly is all across our country. And I've I've got enough clients around the world to know that it's it's not just in the United States. But the but the the tragedy is people do not know why they are so agitated and no one's telling them that if you would just drink water that had minerals in it, especially with some magnesium, you'd calm down a lot. Huh, and, yeah. and and the thing is, like I'm I'm sixty years old, born in nineteen fifty two I have a third generation of my family to be minerally deficient. My kids, my four kids, are the fourth generation. And that's what's happening in America is we're seeing an erosion in the mineral mass of, I call it, homo americanus. Mm-hmm. Chi. 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 Body and there's no man. Marl, he dropped off again. I don't know if he's on Skype or what, but bear with me. He will he will come back on. Sometimes these, these computers are God sent, but sometimes they are not the best thing to to be on. So I'm waiting for him to call back on. And before, when when he calls back in, if you want to get on the air and ask a question, the number is 646-716-9371. All right. Lost you again. Okay. <laughs> so um, so the, the issue is we, we, are, we are Swiss cheese eating Swiss cheese. And, mm-hmm. and and no one knows it. I mean, there's a there's a great book called um, uh, My Mind Just Shut Down. Um, it, it's it's about the empty harvest. There's there's it's tragic what's happened to food in this country, and the vast majority of people are unaware, or they don't want to know how bad it is. We just soon sidestep that whole discussion. Yeah, I think a lot of people are unaware of it, and it, but I think the majority of people just they just don't want to hear about it. They don't want to know. And I always I, I did a report on this. I announced that before you came on and reported. I did in that audio report. I kind of liken our whole society to an extinction level event where you know we're going to be extinct like dinosaurs because we don't have the food that we're eating is overly processed and we don't have you know, enough real food. People aren't eating enough real food right now. Right. I totally agree. Uh, people are they are afraid of fat. And you say, well, why is that important? Because if a low-fat diet uh, was good for you, then why is two-thirds of America overweight and half of those are obese? Well, fat, that is your friend. But more importantly, what fat is, it's a choo-choo train that moves minerals around the body. Uh-huh. And if you don't have good sources of fat, you can't you can't restore mineral mass in the body. Then what they've done is demonized salt. Oh my God, stop eating salt. And this is one of the most insidious things that that uh, I came across is that when you deny salt in our body. It, what it does is it activates aldosterone, the stress hormone. And aldosterone's job, again, is to hold on to whatever salt is there and let go of the relaxed minerals. And mm-hmm. so the low-salt diet that so many millions of people have been following for the last God knows how many years, 25, 30 years, has been causing the hypertension that people have been experiencing. Because yeah, that's a... That's it's a really, ridiculous. yeah, it's a really big problem. And um, I, I imagine a lot of communities, but I know being African American, that's one of the really big problems with a lot of African Americans is they're suffering from hypertension. 
And immediately I can remember my family, um, you know, people would be so salt phobic, but they were really, you know, using the wrong kind of salt. But um, I'm glad you, you touched on that. Well, it's, it's a huge issue uh, in the African-American community. Um, and again, step back from it and think it through. What, what group of people on this planet has been more oppressed or more stressed out than African-Americans? I, I can't think of any. I mean, it's just, and the incidence of hypertension, kidney disease, and heart disease is three times greater in that community than it is in the Caucasian community. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. this doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. And it all relates to the loss of minerals, especially magnesium. And one of one of the great uh, delights of my of, of my life is was getting to get to uh, interact with uh, Gerald W. Dees, who's um, one of the assistant deans for SUNY Downstate Medical Center up in uh, in Brooklyn. Uh-huh. I don't know if you know Dr. Dees. He's, he's an amazing icon in the African-American community. He's 87 years old, and he's still working every day. And he told me what his great-grandmother taught him when she was a slave about how to deal with hypertension. And she would take a teaspoon of Epsom salt, put it in grapefruit juice, and drink it every day. And she didn't have to worry, well, what's Epsom salt? Magnesium sulfate. Right. And that's when he first learned about the importance of magnesium. And he's this big magnesium uh, lover. He's a great guy. But mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a, it's a, a lost um, concept because so many of us don't even know that this mineral exists and we're just completely unaware of its impact on our body. Yeah, getting into that, you, you mentioned heart disease, and I, I wanted to kind of relate that to the incident because this didn't even hit me until um, I came into your Facebook group and started putting things together, that magnesium, advo- what is it called, magnesium advocacy group, or can't remember what yeah, the name is. A, uh, yeah, yeah. Magnesium, so Magnesium advocacy. I was in my early 30s, Morley, and um, I woke, awoke one night, and I thought I was having a heart attack, and went to the ER, and they put me through all kinds of tests, and they said, well, nothing was wrong with me, and I had these real bad heart palpitations. I couldn't really figure out what was going on, and it didn't hit me until maybe, uh, you know, looking into that Facebook group, and you posted something in that group, and I was like, man, that's that's it. That's what I was suffering from. I did. I had low magnesium because I wasn't taking any supplements then. You know, it, I've been in nutrition for been studying nutrition for eight years, and I wasn't at that time taking any supplements. So I know I was very low on magnesium. And just out of coincidence, I had a friend on Facebook who emailed me. Um, emailed me. And he's like, I'm having heart palpitations. So I was like, you know what? you need to start supplementing with some magnesium. Can you kind of talk about that? Sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's one, of my, one of my passions, as you probably know. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I grew up in a family where most people died of, of heart disease. You know, my, my mom had uh, three heart attacks. My grandmother had three heart attacks. Her father had a heart attack. His father had a heart attack. So it's like I was like, okay, and that's the side of the family that I take after. So I'm like, I'm next. And I was very vigilant about my diet and blah blah blah, but I didn't didn't buy into the cholesterol issue. And if we have time, I can I can dance on that. But but the mm-hmm. the key is I've seen the intersection between heart disease and magnesium, and it's the evidence is overwhelming. I mean, it's it's like really, how come no one talks about this? The the the, the heart is a muscle. I mean, we tend to think of it as a pump, but it's actually a muscle. And it's working 24-7. And it's the, the amount of energy that it's consuming every day is staggering. Well, what, what happens is the heart is, in fact, the most metabolically demanding tissue in the body. And the highest concentration of magnesium is in the ventricles of the heart. You think, well, why would, why would, why would our maker put 
all that magnesium in the, in the ventricles of the heart because those are the muscles that are pushing blood either to the lungs or to the rest of our body. And again, you can't make energy and you can't expend energy unless magnesium is attached to ATP. And how does a heart attack happen? You get stressed out. You start losing magnesium. And there are dozens and dozens of enzymes that are critical to the function of the heart, and those enzymes don't work without magnesium. Enzymes like alkaline phosphatase, which is really important for keeping the heart muscle alkaline. And you can't, the alkaline phosphatase doesn't work unless magnesium to it. And what happens if the, if the pH starts getting too acidic in the heart? The ATP can't hold on to the magnesium anymore, and it stops working. There's an enzyme called MKK4. It would take me 15 minutes to say the word. So it's MKK4. It is the enzyme in the what's called the sinoatrial node where the pacemaker cells are in the heart. And that enzyme is, in fact, the drumbeat of the heart. Mm-hmm. Can you guess what mineral is essential for MKK4 to work? I would take a wild guess and say magnesium. Ding, ding, ding. Right. <laughs> so, then there's, so then there's another enzyme. It's actually a peptide. It's called atrial natural peptide. Sure, her heart overwhelmed by aldosterone. Hmm. Can you guess what ma- what mineral activates ANP in the heart? Uh, magnesium. Yeah, and it goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. Darren, there are like fifty enzymes like this. They just keep keep going on. There are three enzymes alone that regulate cholesterol. All of them are magnesium dependent. Mm-hmm. And and yet, if you talk to the average cardiologist, they would look at you with blank stares, saying, "What are you talking about?" And in fact, I, I wrote, wrote an article that I showed to a very good friend of mine up in Chicago, who's a uh, very high-profile uh, member of a faculty of a medical school, and I showed him the article. It was about heart disease, and he read it, and we sat down at. Starbucks one night, one morning, excuse me. And he said, this is really good. And he says, this deserves to be published. I said, well, it's great. I appreciate you saying that. And as he handed the, the article back to me, he said, but Marley, you've got to understand. He said, magnesium is no longer a popular drug. And I looked huh? at him and I went, I said, this, this is a guy that undergrad, Harvard, medical school, Harvard, trained at, at Mass General. So he's like in the top one thousandth of one percent of physicians in the country and I looked him in the eye and I said Tom it's not a drug it's the mineral that runs your body and he looked at me with disbelief he had no idea what I was talking about and the reason why people's heart stops working it's usually one of three reasons it's either because of a heart attack where the, where the muscle locks up so when you mm-hmm. make make a fist with your hand and see how hard that is, so that's that's calcium at work. Now open your hand and relax it. Mm-hmm. And that's magnesium at work. And for the heart to work, it needs to have both calcium and magnesium. But what happens when the magnesium disappears is it becomes a fist and it locks up. And anyone who's ever had a Charlie horse knows exactly what we're talking about. So that's yeah. that's one of, one of the main reasons. Second is the heart loses its rhythm. Again, go back to the MKK4 enzyme, it stops working. The heart loses its, its beat. And then the third main reason is heart failure. And there's actually, a, this, is, this is mind-boggling. <clears throat> there's a, there's a, so the world's greatest uh, mineral deficiency or enzyme deficiency is uh, deals with energy production for the heart. And it's known as beriberi disease, and it gets very esoteric. Well, it turns out that what, what's behind all of this 
is is a very specific enzyme. It's called the glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme that starts the whole process of energy production for the heart. And you can't do that unless thiamine is present in an activated state. And if thiamine or vitamin B1 isn't present, mm-hmm. that enzyme doesn't work, energy doesn't get produced, and it has a cascade effect on weakening the heart, and it just can't do its job. Now, again, can you guess what mineral is essential to activate thiamine so that the energy pathway can be created? That would be magnesium. Ding, ding, ding. And this yeah. is happening all over the heart. And it's like, huh. are you kidding me? And so every, what I've been in the process of writing a book, and I've identified 21 different heart disease conditions. And every one of them has a magnesium deficiency component. I've identified the enzyme pathway, and I've got three to five citations for every one of those 21 conditions. Wow. Wow. While we're talking about that, we, we keep talking about magnesium. What are some of the forms of magnesium that you recommend? I know that you recommended one for me, and I still take that one, but I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'll let you kind of name those that you, you recommend. No, it's, it's, it's important for people to take multiple forms. Um, I mean, I think the, the key is to start with a good base of minerals, and we, we've had a lot of success with two different forms. There's Anderson Minerals out of uh, Salt Lake City, and it's a a new form that we've just been working with out of Australia called C, it's an SEA, C mineral, a wonderful, it's got 92 different minerals in it, it's an amazing product, so you've got got to start with a good base, Um, Uh then we we really like to to engage in what's called a full core press, and get people to get a good oral, Um, and we've had very good success with called Jigsaw, which is a, a it's a magnesium malate product, a very, very a bioavailable. It's blended with a number of uh, B vitamins, and it's, it's just, it delivers. And the other one that we've had a lot of good success with is Cure Encapsulations uh, Magnesium Glycinate. Uh, it's a wonderful product. Um, we also think it's important to Oh, there's another one that I would mention is um, uh, magnesium chloride by, um, I think it's Altea, Altura. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a wonderful product, and I'll make sure I get you the right name so you can post it on your um, on your page. But oil is, is important. Water, we, we like to see clients have uh, magnesium water. Uh, the water that we're drinking is, is an abomination. But uh, mm-hmm. you can get drops, uh, or you can get uh, Carolyn Dean sells a wonderful product called Remag. Uh, there's another group out of um, Columbia, South Carolina, uh, called Complete H2O Minerals, and they have a, a product called Ultimate Mag, and so it is a very good form of magnesium. Uh, big into transdermal as well. Uh, Epsom salts are very popular, uh, but, but what we found is that Probably the most effective way to restore magnesium status is with uh, magnesium chloride baths, either a foot bath uh-huh. or a regular bath. And you take an ounce of, of the chloride oil, magnesium chloride oil, uh, and go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, can you get too much? Is there a point where you can get too much magnesium? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 the, the switch is if you develop diarrhea, that's the body's uh-huh. way of letting you know you've, you've got too much. And the, the rule of thumb that, that we use is five times body weight. And so if you weigh 100 pounds, take 500 milligrams. And, and I recognize that you've got, the, you've got the oil, you've got the transdermal. The, the body is burning through, and the, and the expression that I, that I use is we, we have a very significant magnesium burn rate in society today because of the hypersympathetic lifestyle that we were talking about earlier. Because mm-hmm. of the, the nature of the food that we're eating, the medications that people are on, just the state of, of hint, a frenzied anxiety. And so we, we really feel it's important to uh, get as much magnesium as your body will tolerate. Now, certainly people who have kidney disease are cautioned because 
because kidneys that have um, a chronic kidney failure have a hard time processing kidney, or excuse me, have a hard time processing magnesium. So they have to be very careful about that. But uh, even some of the leading research is indicating that magnesium is helping those patients, but it has to be done under very um, carefully supervised conditions. Uh, mm-hmm. But other than that, I think people are pretty safe to focus on this, and they're going to find that what, what they typically find when they start to work with magnesium is their headaches go away, their constipation goes away, they tend to sleep better, and the little things don't bother them anymore. Little yeah, irritations that will set you off. Yeah, I can attest to one of those. I know um, I used to always have problems sleeping, and I take you know magnesium pretty pretty regularly now, and it just seems like once my head hits that pillow, I'm ready to go. I drift off in the la la land. So, um, and plus, but, it's just go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to say that for, for, for those who want to understand why you're able to sleep better, Google melatonin pathway on and look at the um, <clears throat> top left hand image is the actual pathway that shows how we go from tryptophan all the way down to melatonin and it's it, there's magnesium, zinc, B vitamins all throughout that pathway and it's that that's its job allowing you to relax so that you can get eight hours of rest and recovery. And in fact, what the body is doing while you're sleeping is working like a dog to get rid of all the toxins that are all over your body from having lived a a normal active life. But you need that time um, offline so that the the body can can clean out the uh, garbage and the debris. Yeah. I got one more question to ask you, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up here. But I was amazed. I actually was, uh, in preparing for this, I looked at some of your stuff, and I looked at some of uh, Dr. Dean's stuff as well. And Uh um, I bumped into um, her article. She was talking about diabetes and magnesium and how important magnesium is when, you know, for a diabetic. Can you go into that? I'm I'm just amazed at that, and I want to understand it a little bit more. But, uh, it's a really key issue. Um, the real the real focal point for diabetes is insulin resistance. And what is that? It's when when we have a meal that has carbohydrates, the body's got to break down the carbohydrates, eventually becomes glucose, and that glucose needs to get inside the cell so that it can be broken down made into ATP, which is a unit of of energy for the for the cell. <clears throat> Insulin is the messenger to get the, um, the glucose inside, but there's a sentry at the door of the cell, and it's called tyrosine kinase. And tyrosine mm-hmm. kinase must be activated with magnesium, ding, ding, ding. And mm-hmm. if it's not, it doesn't let insulin in, and it doesn't let the glucose in. And then what happens? The insulin level rises, the glucose level rises, and you got you got a problem on your hand. Well, the other side of, of diabetes is because of the lack of magnesium, there's a whole series of enzyme pathways that don't work. And so you have, there's a stage of, of the, the uh, carbohydrate metabolism that's called glycolysis. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, an element that's the, the um, Krebs cycle. And then there's electron transport chain. Well, seven of the ten enzymes in glycolysis are magnesium dependent. Four of the seven in the Krebs cycle are magnesium dependent. And you can't engage in the electron transport chain, which is where the the, the bulk of the the, uh, ATP is being made, if magnesium is not shuttling things around properly and activating the mitochondrial enzymes to make that happen. And so the, the whole issue of diabetes is, is inability to process sugar. And it's all magnesium dependent for the huh. vast majority of cases. And again, it's like, who knew? Who? You, you don't read articles that talk about magnesium deficiency as a, as a key issue of 
of diabetes, but, but I'm sure you've got listeners who know that metabolic syndrome is tied to heart disease. Metabolic mm-hmm. syndrome is basically diabetes, uh, high glucose, or I mean, excuse me, high um, blood pressure. It's mm-hmm. obesity, and it's um, my mind is really playing tricks with me. What's the fourth one? Uh, lipids, blood sugar, cholesterol, mm-hmm. and, and weight. So those are the four components. Well, all four of those components, all four aspects of metabolic syndrome are born of magnesium deficiency. So it would make sense that the heart disease itself, which is highly correlated with those four conditions, would have a magnesium relationship. But again, this is not something that's openly discussed because there ain't no money in a cure. Yeah, and you're right. Very disruptive. Very disruptive. Yeah, you're right. So many things go back to money, man. If people just follow that trail, they'll figure out so many things. Absolutely. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's central to the whole equation. Yeah, yeah. All right, Marty. So thank you for being on Fat Man Radio. What's your? I know you said you were coming out with a book. What's the title of the book? And I think you would. Do you have a website for the book? Yeah. Well, right now the, the website is www.mag.org. Uh, I'm going to hold off on the title. It's, it's going to deal with heart disease and magnesium. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. still in the process of uh, trademarking the title. I want to get that done. Um, but it will be a very eye-catching title, and I think people will very quickly understand what, what's going on. Um, got a Facebook community that you refer to. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's a group. It's a uh, magnesium advocacy group. We've got about 3,600 people uh, banging their gums all, all around the world around the splendors of magnesium. And um, we'd invite your listeners to join the fray. And anyone who has uh, questions for me, can email me at um, my email is morley m o r l e y at gotmag dot org or free to pick up the phone and give me a call and my cell phone is area code eight four seven nine two two eight zero six one so I I um, I've never met a question I didn't enjoy and I welcome <laughs> uh, folks that folks that you know and folks that uh, follow you feel free to uh, to uh, Go offline and, and uh, reach out. I'd be happy to talk to him. Yeah, when you when your book comes out, I'd love to have you back on to discuss it. So I'll, I'm looking forward to that. Well, I can't wait, and I, I'm shooting for it should be completed by the end of the year, and uh, so we'll shoot for something maybe early early next year to have a chance to go at it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Morley, for being on. And when your book comes out, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to getting you back on. So. Thanks again for being on Fat Man Radio. Okay, Darren. Thanks so much for the opportunity. All Take right. Thanks. All right. Good night. Bye-bye. All right. So that is it. If you have questions for Morley, I think Morley laid out a lot of information there. He gave out his personal phone number. So take advantage of that. Um, next week, next Thursday, I'm going to have Troy Casey on. Troy is the certified health nut. It's a show that you don't want to miss. Troy was actually a model for a very long time, and he went through some, you know, some issues, and he got himself back healthy. And I'm looking forward to having Troy on the show, and I know it's going to be a great show. So join me next week for Troy Casey, certified health nut, same fat time, same fat channel. Talk to you later. Peace.